There we go. Hey, guys, this is Alex with Franchise Talk. Hey, thanks for watching and uh, joining us again. Today, we have another franchise that we're going to go over today. Um, looking at it, you, you, you're you trying to get into franchises. You're trying to find what's important and what's out there. You're trying to dig deeper, find the information that you want to find. No better way to do that than checking off the next box in your checklist and finding, you know, going through videos to search and learn the way you want to learn. So today for you, we have a painting franchise called Wow One Day Painting. All right. And we have James and Cameron with us. All right. Got it right. All right. There we go, guys. But hey, guys, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? Talk a little bit about your franchise. Tell us about it. Give us a brief overview. All right. We'll flip it over to you. Sure. Um, James Alish and Cameron Weirs. Cameron, your role. So uh, I lead the franchise development efforts. So, uh, you know, if, if when you listen to today's video, if something here resonates with you and you want to learn more, then I'll be the person that you would be speaking with, and I'll walk you through the uh, uh, walk you through the process. And then James over here leads the uh, leads the brand as a whole as managing director. Yeah, I would be responsible for uh, I guess a combination of working with Cameron and making sure that we have uh, the right fit with each franchise partner that we would partner or award going forward, as well as making sure that we have the systems and the tools and all the operational structure in place to. Uh, train and then to coach and support all our franchise partners to success in their uh, in their respective businesses. So Wow One Day Painting, in terms of an introduction to who we are, um, we are part of an organization called O2E Brands. O2E stands for Ordinary to Exceptional. So it's a parent company of a number of franchise brands all in the service space. So the, the originating brand that started with O2E was a company called 1-800-GOT-JUNK around 20 years ago. Um, and the founder and CEO of that company, uh, partner of ours, Brian Scudamore, was also the, the individual that came up with the idea originally for Wow One Day Painting. And where the concept for Wow One Day Painting came from and, and, and what it is, uh, was that Brian actually had his house painted uh, by somebody uh, here uh, in, the, in the city where one of our two head offices is in Vancouver, Canada, and had this crazy idea that he could offer to complete uh, a paint job in one day of, at that time, about 3,000 square foot house, 2,500 square foot house, trim, wall, ceiling, the whole thing. And Brian was quite blown away from it, blown away by it. And uh, at, at that point, after he had the job done, uh, being the entrepreneur that he was, saw an opportunity. And with as fragmented as the painting space is, uh, he wanted to build his next brand on this concept of Wow One Day Painting, which we are today. So I can talk a little bit about what makes us different, but Cameron, uh, did I kind of hit who we are and, and the space that we're in? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And I, and I think to build on that, um, you know, what, what we've found is that uh, not only is this resonating well uh, with, you know, every, uh, you know, painting consumer, but uh, more specifically on the residential interior side. Which makes a lot of sense when you think about a one-day completion. Um, who's that really connecting with? And it's that homeowner that doesn't want their home turned into a construction site for you know seven days, ten days, fifteen days. So to have a crew be able to come in, you know, they ring the doorbell on paint day. Standing behind that, uh, standing behind the salesperson is a team. Of, you know, one guy's holding a you know paint can, the other guy's holding a ladder, the other guy's holding a brush. Go in, they complete the, pro the, the project in a day while the customer's away at work. They come home and bam, it's all done. So it, it is, it's, customers are blown away by it. They're, they're loving that this is an option that is available to them in the markets that we are servicing. And it, the market just responded very well to it. Um, so I, I, I toss it back to you for any other questions you have to dig deeper in, into the concept. Well, definitely. And I, and I appreciate that. It really does sound like a really strong franchise brand. Um, you know, uh, what is how strong is it? I mean, how many units do you have out? How many franchisees do you have? Sure. Yeah, we've got 32 uh, franchise units in operations right now, and we're at that point, uh, which I think is probably the exciting point, where us being in a unique situation where we've got 20 years of franchising experience with the other brands that we've worked with prior to Wow One Day, figuring out some tweaks. Uh, to our own branding, and actually, if you if you Google us or or look for any PR media media on us, there's an interesting story just recently that was published on Forbes.com on Brian's rebranding of Wow because we started out actually looking and feeling a little different than this crazy green smile which is behind us now, which is working very well. Um, but <laughs> but uh, there's actually quite a unique story about how Brian rebranded Wow after originally 
launched. But to your question, we're at 32, and we're right at the place right now where we're poised for some significant growth uh, across North America, and uh, we're excited and ready for it. We've got our operational systems buttoned down, um, kind of at that point where we've got enough of our early adopters that are experiencing some fantastic success. So if you want to talk to us, we'd be happy to you know, connect the right people to, to talk to our franchise candidates. But uh, we're in growth mode is probably the short way of saying it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And, and you know, for those, those of you who are like new to the industry or new to looking at franchises, the big thing is this, when you're talking about branding in any industry, branding is a big deal. Branding can mean life or death in, in anything. And I love the fact, I love guys that you did uh, and that you have that brand as that very simple and elegant, you know, uh, wow with a smiley face. It just, mm -hmm. it just works well. It, it really stands out. And I'll tell you, you know, even further, uh, you know, I met Cameron at, uh, at a big broker conference down in Orlando. And that stood out. That really did stood out. As, as many brands as a franchise broker looks at, and trust me, we look at a few of them. That's, that's definitely, a, that's a brand that really does catch the eye. <laughs> I mean, if you look at it, it's got a ton of green in it. It really stands out from the white. It's very contrasting. And that'll speak volumes to your clientele as well. So anybody, there you go. <laughs> and it's gotta be in the coffee cup. I, yeah. I drink a ton of coffee, probably way too much. But that keeps me going. And that's, that's, that's my life juice right there. So, uh, you know, well, we, we see that, we see that your branding is great. What is the uniqueness of this service? There's a few painting companies out there. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah, what absolutely. Is of it? Yeah. I'd, I'd love to take that one. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and just on the branding, it's, it's, it's interesting. There's, there's lots of information out there, but there's, there's a, there's a book out there called the 22 immutable laws of branding. And it yeah. kind of walks through step by step a lot of the key components of having a brand that endures and lasts. And um, a lot of those components would be what Brian would have built this brand on. Um, the power of the name would be one. But anyways, I encourage people to check that out. Uh, to your question on what makes this different, that is a great question. Um, uh, I came, before I came to lead the organization and work with Cameron, I, I would have spent the majority of my career in uh, home services mm -hmm. uh, in different capacities and, uh, and as well in franchising. And ironically enough, from the point where I left uh, business school to about 14 years later, I actually spent a significant amount of time, that first chunk of my career in the, in the, in the painting space as it is, working with a painting franchisor. I uh, didn't think that I would life would kind of bring me full circle after doing a number of different things in between. But when uh, I look at what makes us different, the brand really is two things. And there's two key words. And it's speed plus quality equals wow. So uh, what makes us different is that we're, we're in the business where our purpose or mission is to make uh, the ordinary business of painting exceptional. So how we do that in a different way is we passionately approach each customer and every job with the vision of giving every homeowner or business owner for painting a commercial job their space back. And what makes us different, I think, is some simple things that we execute really, really well. And when we don't, we, we should be, and we try really hard to execute on them, but we would have four main core tenants that we would build business on operationally that are internal focusing, not so much marketing pieces, if the speed plus quality equals wow, that would be an external customer facing brand piece. But when I look at how we build our brand and, and we try to differentiate operationally, uh, one that we stand on uh, that, that is simple, but it's, it's, a, it's a core pillar for us is friendly uniform painters every time. So people choose us because we don't some of the time show up uniform. We don't some of the time show up with people not looking clean. Every time they're friendly uniform painters. The second thing is that we, we start and finish on time. Now what on time um, uh, is for you might be eight, it might be 8.15 for me, it might be 8.45 for Cameron, but part of our process from the lead to the sale to the operations and the wrap up of the job is that we deliver uh, starting and finishing on time. The third thing that would make us different, and I believe that this is probably, um, in the eyes of a home consumer, if not the biggest thing, <laughs> Uh, one of the biggest things when you're when you're hiring someone uh, in a contracting capacity and that's exceptional communication so what I mean by exceptional communication is giving the customer almost a little more information that they need to know uh, just ahead of when they need to know it and I won't get into all the systems and ways that we do that but exceptional communication would be number three and we believe that 
person who's hiring a painting contractor uh, would value that exceptional communication as much, maybe if not even more, than the quality paint job that they're going to get. And the fourth one that we deliver on is big crews. So how we deliver 70% of our jobs in a day is not that we rush a job ever. We don't paint any faster, any slower than any other painting company. But what we would do is we would plan it out differently and we would come with more capacity. Our crews are just a little bigger. What a little bigger means is where people traditionally have two people on a crew, we would come with four or more. So again, that's friendly uniform painters, start and finish time guaranteed, exceptional communication, and big crews. And that, we believe, is what makes us different. Not because we do something magic, but we're really clear operation on, operationally on what we want to do and what we don't want to do. We're going to do that very well. And when we do that, we find the end goal of winning a referral. We all know today's uh, online referral um, game. And uh, you have to be better than the competition. We believe those four things allow us to do that. And we're very respectful, as you pointed out. There's a lot of great companies out there. Um, that are there for the customers to choose from. So we have to be better or else we're going to lose the day. So that's a long-winded answer, but I believe that's how we're different. No, that's perfect, guys. That's that's perfect. You know, it, with all the clients that I've worked with, and I'm sure you guys have seen this, you know, quite a bit on your end, is when you're looking at a new business, you're starting off looking, looking at your first franchises, you, you typically want to know two things. And that's, you know, what what is this going to get me? So that's one. And then two, how is it sellable? Can I sell it? You know, that's that's the biggest thing. How am I going to work with that business? So that that answers it perfectly. So that that kind of goes full circle with what we're looking for and perfect. But that leads me to my next question. And I'm kind of kind of asking a little bit different way because it, it kind of suits the industry a little bit. Sure, just being yeah. a service based industry is not necessarily what kind of lifestyle is expected in the first year as a business owner, but what kind of lifestyle does the painting industry and this this business get you? Is it home based or brick and mortar? Does it yep. does it help you? Does it give you flexibility? Can you uh, give us a little bit of overview on that? Yeah, I'll maybe give you one thought and then pass it to Cameron. I'm I'm the operations guy, so I'm going to say anybody starting any business in the first couple of years better be prepared to go hard and put their blood, sweat, and tears into it. But that's kind of an assumption. Yeah. So I don't yeah. want to speak to it, Cameron. Yeah. So I guess if we we want to start with whether it's home based versus bricks and mortar, um, I like to say that it's home based, but it's not based at home. So while your, your operations, your headquarters is in your home office, all the work you do is out in the field. So when we start talking about lifestyle, that really does uh, resonate with someone who's been stuck, you know, sitting in a chair in a cubicle for the last 15 years, and the day is dictated to them. I, I hop in my car every day, I sit in an hour in traffic, I do the eight hours at work, I get back in the car, I drive home, I do it all again tomorrow. The great thing about this industry, and at least this business, is that every day you're meeting new people, you're on new job sites, new challenges, and, and that's exciting uh, for at least all the franchise partners that are in our system. It's a very exciting proposition. It can scare the crap out of some other people that like to have that, that sort of security of, Structure. okay, I need to know what tomorrow is going to look like. Um, so we start talking about lifestyle. This certainly allows an individual to come in and dictate what their day looks like. Mm -hmm. um, now, that doesn't, that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean you're not going to be plenty busy because you will. Um, but it, you get to dictate and structure your day in a way that fits the lifestyle that you want. And I think that's really attractive about this business. And, and a, lot, a lot of other home service opportunities would, would have a similar characteristic. Um, so certainly I think that's a, a real strong feature of, of what this offering can bring to an individual. Some, some of the pieces about this, um, this industry that I think that would be similar to, to other you know, competitors or anybody other, else in a similar space is um, – Though it's an, a necessary service, there isn't that uh, that uh, that factor of imminent urgency. Like if you look yeah. at some some um, uh, businesses or some services, such as it's a insurance restoration, one that comes to mind. When it's happening, it's happening now. You have a choice when you're going to schedule it, and you got to take care of that clutter fire right away, which is a needed service, but it kind of controls your your life and your space. So um, about the painting space. Um, you, you've got a little bit of control and flexibility. People are generally not losing their mind that they have to have their house painted within the next 20 minutes, but obviously you want to respond as quickly as, as possible to them. Another good piece about it, about the industry, uh, is uh, is the fact that the cash flow is generally quite good in this industry. Uh, there's no inventory in it. And back to the flexibility piece, 
for the owner and driver of the business. We want you to be obviously expected to work hard and put your put your uh, heart and soul into it, but there is uh, the majority of that time that is coordinated and dictated by you. Okay. Yeah, one other one other piece that I'll add on top of that, just building on the. Uh, the no inventory piece because that's a big deal you know to not have to tie up a lot of your capital a lot of your resources into you know product that's sitting on a shelf or product that's sitting in a fridge that can spoil that's a big deal and and some of the outcome to that tying it back to the cash flow is low it's overhead, overhead. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know on a daily basis the majority of the expenses that you as a franchise owner will incur is tied directly to work that you're producing on any given yeah, day so that those costs. fixed costs are quite low and by removing that bricks and mortar, that office facility and, and having the ability to sort of have that mobile office that's in the field. Nowadays with technology and the cloud, you know, you have a tablet and you're live and you can be printing quotes and managing your business from out in the field, which, you know, we start talking about overhead. If we can keep that low, we keep those margins high. And I think that's very important, especially for somebody uh, that's in a startup state where capital may be a little bit leaner. Yeah, and it sounds, it sounds like the perfect scenario for quite a few people, uh, especially ones who are just trying to get their first business or starting starting to step down the learning phase of you know uh, just getting into franchising at all. Uh, you've got a, a flexible business model that allows for a little bit of time flexibility. So a lot of people that I've seen gravitate to businesses like this has been uh, you know parents that have been working like crazy who don't have enough time for their kids activities or don't have enough time for you know missing those really important you know who are missing those really important times with their kids trust me I know you know I was deployed for years so that's that's a really important thing to folks who are like me coming back from Afghanistan or Iraq or even some of the folks who've been working corporate America I've heard you know I've heard some crazy stories about how hard and how long and how many hours that they put in you know, away from their family. So I, I see this as a really good uh, fit for those people. So looking into it, you know, it, we've talked about lifestyle. Can you guys give us any averages as, or in terms of dollars, what, what somebody can expect? What is the light at the end of the rainbow? Or what is the light at the end of the tunnel with this franchise? What, what, what can you expect as a franchisee? Yeah, do you want to? Sure. First? Yeah. And, and um, uh, the, the question that always gets asked is how well, generally the question that always gets asked is how much money can I make? And this is the same with any franchise <laughs> opportunity. And yeah. uh, the, the way that we would usually pose this back to someone, it's the quarterback analogy. Yeah. Do you want to you can use that? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we tend to use sports analogies quite a bit and it's, yeah. it's like a quarterback trying to decide what team they want to go on, assuming that every team has a playbook, every team has a good system behind it. And then asking each team and saying, well, how many touchdowns am I going to throw? There's a lot that goes into it. A big part of it is obviously you as a franchise owner, what you bring to the table and your skill set. Certainly, we're going to bring you a, a very strong playbook and a winning attitude and all this, the tools, and we can go on and on and on about all those those systems. So when we talk about averages, you know, I guess the averages are a little bit dangerous because you can be above it, you can be below it. And so when we go through setting expectations with franchise candidates, we want to be very clear it's not cookie cutter. It's not one size fits all. And most importantly, we don't want to put everyone in a box and assume that everyone wants the multi-million dollar business. You know, it, it takes a significant investment in a lot of uh, leadership and and strength to get to that state. Some people don't want that. Some people want a more, uh, like we say, lifestyle business where they've got good, healthy uh, margins, making money, you know, giving jobs to the community, spend time with their kids. Two different approaches to the same business, both feeling successful. So, you know, as far as numbers go, you know, we have to be somewhat limited because, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, some, anyone that's investigating a franchise, in our current FDD state, we don't have averages in the business. Um, we will be speaking to it in our 2016 edition, and maybe I'll, I'll yeah, sure. bounce it over to you. Here, here's what I can share in terms of averages. Um, um, we can we will be sharing that we've uh, we've grown the number that if I was coming in and I was a new franchise partner that I would want to see is what's the health of uh, your franchisees in their first 12 months and when we look back over the last uh, uh, 24 months to 36 months last three years uh, that number has steadily grown and this last year uh, it grew by almost 50 percent and in terms of averages what we can say is 
Um, it's our it's our goal uh, to get our first year franchise partners in what we call the race to profitability, and the painting space in any in any model if it's being run well and led and operated well, it's a business where uh, the opportunity to be profitable in year one definitely does exist, and that's our goal. Our systems are built around that. Our training and coaching is built around that, um, and that that's what the focus is in year one. Uh, we've also seen, uh, in terms of the jobs that the franchise partners deliver, we've seen the average size of the job in the last, uh, in the last, yeah, 12 months actually increase by uh, over 25 percent. Still staying with the same customer segmentation, while the conversion has also gone up 10 percent. By conversion, I mean our ability to close and sell the jobs on site. So all the directional arrows, being respectful of what we can disclose and can't disclose in the FTD, all the directional arrows of meetings and averages uh, pretty much across the board are, um, are pointing up. And the way that we generally address the question of how much money can I make and, and are you a quarterback? How many touchdowns are you going to score? I don't know <laughs> until I see you on the field. Is What we do is we just connect you with our franchise partners and the whole process of validation. Uh, when you talk to franchisees in our world we call them franchise partners to just ask those very direct pointed questions so you can get the earnings disclosure straight from the horse's mouth um, we we couldn't be more excited right now uh, to put you in touch with our franchise partners and that that I can say wholeheartedly and the faster we can get a candidate who's saying uh, how much can I make the faster we can get them connected to our franchise partner these days uh, the better it off it is for us the better off it is for us because uh, it's a good story, and and we want those uh, FPs of ours to uh, to share their stories because it's a good story. That's perfect. And guys, you know, if if you're watching this for the first time, or if if you've been watching it for a little while, you know, looking at an FDD or finding an FDD, if this is the first time, an FDD is a franchise disclosure document. All right. The fact that these guys have an item 19, which is the 19th item in that FDD, in that franchise disclosure document, is, is, is extremely good, especially for a newer franchise with 30, 30 franchisees around that, around that proportion. And, and you're looking at strength in that. that that's a really good validation. So the sooner you can get to the validation process where you're, where you're actually conversating with, with their franchisees, who's active in the system, and comparing yourself to those people, that's when you're going to really find the information that you want. All right. This is just a light overview. So I appreciate you guys for answering that. I know it's always a touchy subject because this is, after all, we're, we're not touching on exact amounts. It is what you make of it at the end of the day. And, uh, and, 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 and at the, at the same time, we're respectful. It's what everybody wants to know. Like anybody looking at a business is looking at the business saying, what can this opportunity uh, do? Uh, what What is my earnings potential? And we get that. Like we're, we've been in this business for a long time. We, we understand that and we respectful of that so our challenge is to make sure that we're talking to the right people and not overwhelming our, our you know our group of FPs but we want to connect you with them as soon as we can um, to give you all that information and 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 while sticking within the framework of you know the franchise uh, law you know so we got to make sure that we're following the protocol of the FTC and all that kind of stuff so of course you know in a, in a, in a forum like this not the best place to be you know digging into the specifics of how you Mr. Candidate will perform, and it's certainly something that as we go through the learning process together, we need to make sure that you are very clear on the numbers uh, and that proper expectations are set right from day one. So it is a very big part of the learning, and that's really what that that uh, journey is from going to, hey, this is something I may want to take a closer look at, to do we really understand each other, and, and are we both feeling very comfortable in this partnership? Yeah. Yep, and this and that's exactly what it is, guys. And, and you're seeing it from the franchises themselves. It's not just me hopping on camera and saying it. It's it's a partnership. It is a very well thought out partnership, and that's what makes this successful. Is them finding the right person and you finding the right match. So I hope this is very helpful for you. But this this is coming from the franchisors themselves, and and that's that's really key. But um, looking at it. You know, who are you looking with with everything that we've touched on? Who are you looking to award a franchise? Do you have a specific target in mind? Um, yeah, and and for some reason that just made me think of uh, one of your questions earlier and saying what makes you different. Um, so I'll kind of bridge that question back to your question here about who are we looking for? Because the short answer is yes, we have a very specific picture of somebody that we have in mind. 
But when we look at, again, what we offer, what makes a business different, there's, there's, there's those four things, uh, our EFAs that I talked about before. Um, and one of the other things that I didn't touch on that makes us a little bit different is typically there's two big challenges in the painting industry. And um, uh, one of those challenges, as with almost any business, whether it's retail or service based, is, is your labor force, is finding the right people to deliver on your promises. That's not exclusive to painting, but it's, but it's the same in, in the painting industry as it is with almost any other business. That's one. The other big challenge with the painting industry is typically is seasonality. And one of the unique things that has evolved from our brand um, from day one of its inception is that Wow One Day intuitively is an interior paint brand, which is contrary to the majority of our competitors out there. You see a huge bell curve over the course of the year where the exterior market drives about 80, that 80, maybe five, maybe 60 to 75 percent of the revenue for the year. Whereas our model caters a bit more to the interior residential customer, and we layer on the exterior to that. But there's a bit of a flattening in the revenue cycle of our brand over the course of the year that you don't see in a lot of other businesses. Not to say that there aren't some great interior painters out there. But people see our brand online or through all of our digital tactics with our awesome team to be up working with us and they say, um, I'm moving into my brand new 3,000 square foot house, wow, one day they must be an interior company on a call. And we've seen that time and time and time and time again and we're evolving to this interior um, uh, focus um, uh, which addresses that second big piece of seasonality. So to your question on what type of person are we, um, are we looking for, Here, here's a couple of people that would fit into the type of person that would uh, fit with the opportunities that make us different. Uh, I think one, it would be uh, somebody that's very goal oriented, somebody that's very clear on why they're doing this and what they want to achieve out of it. And it's, uh, we use the word around here, entrepreneur. And um, uh, in our world, that means a couple of things. That means somebody that is willing to be coached, willing to be part of a brand and a system and willing to take direction and learn how to do it because we will provide the direction that you need. There's no guesswork here. We know how to be successful. The question is, are you prepared to be open and hear that so that you can execute the plans to be successful combined with the entrepreneurial drive and desire to want to be your own boss? So that balance is a unique balance that not everybody has. So that is a huge component, that goal orientation and the balance of I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm willing to follow direction to be part of a team. And the third piece before I throw it over you, Cameron, because I'm sure you can, you can talk about focus, faith, and effort would be just values, values fit. We're very clear on what the values uh, are for our organization, for our parent organization, um, and we have uh, some very core focused values that we would measure every franchise partner candidate up against. Um, and there has to be a fit because I often hear Cameron say, in other words, this is like a marriage. <laughs> you are you are going to be spending a lot of time together. This is not a short term play. You're looking to truly partner for the long term. And if your values don't align, it's going to be very painful regardless of how talented or how much money somebody has. So for us right up front, that's got to be there or else it's uh, it's not a fit. So what else would make a fit? Yeah, I think one one misconception that people have when they when they first take a look at a, a painting business is they say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not a painter. I don't know anything about painting. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be putting paint on walls. This has nothing to do with painting. I know that sounds kind of funny, even though this is a painting business. Yeah. That's sort of the commodity. That's sort of what we do. What this opportunity is about that's is the about growing industry. Exactly, and that's that's the that's the need that's the the need that we are filling within the marketplace. But what we're actually building here is a brand. We're building a brand. Uh, we're building a household name in in an industry that currently doesn't have a dominant brand in the interior residential sector. So that's really how we're standing apart. And when we start to take a look at you know who would fit. Uh, that type of role, it's less about you know where you've come from. In other words, mm -hmm. I mean, if you were to take a look at every one of our franchise partners, you're going to see backgrounds. You've got former restaurant owners. You've got military people. You've got uh, uh, you know um, engineering uh, background. Engineering. You got lawyers, business development, sales insurance, guys. sales. You know, so it, it's all across the board. So it's not that you know X industry uh, is going to set you up for the the best success in this space. What we look for more is building on what James said is, is values. We look for um, uh, people that can set goals, people that want to set goals for themselves, that are inwardly driven, that are hungry uh, to succeed, um, that want to get their hands dirty if they yeah. need to, um, and and they just check their egos at the door because anyone that's in startup 
you're in startup. You're in a certain in, in a certain state. It's it's kind of like uh, you know being a rookie, and any rookie is still a rookie. And so you've got to check your at the door. You've got to be open to learning, open to coaching, and understand that you got into franchising because there's a proven formula, there's a model, there's a system and support. That's why you want a partner in, in the franchise system. So take advantage of it and 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 listen and and be open to all that coaching and and learning because that's really why you want to align yourself with the franchise system versus going at it on your own. So that's less cool. about the industry. It's not about, we're not looking for painters. Certainly if you have painting experience, that's, that's an asset. Obviously it's going to help your learning curve, but what's most important is you bring the right attitude. Uh, you've got that tenacity where if there's a wall in front of you, you kick it down, you go around it, you find a way to, to, to get past it um, and that you're open to, to the coaching and the learning. Yeah, the last piece I'll just maybe add on to that is um, you like to move at a good pace and you have a preference to be a leader. Yeah, that would be the other piece. Because when I look at our top performing uh, franchises and our top performing franchise partners, the characteristics of them are all similar. And there are those pieces that we talked about there, but they, they enjoy moving at a good pace. They enjoy making decisions. That's not stressful. That's energizing for them and they prefer to lead. They may not have ever led a painter before, but we will train them and we will coach them and we will you know, um, support them. And they want to be the leader of the growing crews and of the growing business and establishing their business with our brand together in their local area. And they are a wow one day in their metro. That leadership piece is key. That's absolutely correct. I mean, it, and that's almost any business I've seen, except for you know, with except for a few that I've come across. But you guys, you guys hit the nail right on the head. And this may be the uh, the guy from the army coming out and and just saying it, but looking at it a, from the military at least, you're looking at three 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 things really defining a leader, and that's that's and the capability of being a leader, and that's purpose, direction, and motivation. Can you supply that? Can you do that? And and I think you guys hit the nail right on the head. When it when it comes down to that kind of person being the right fit for you, also um, if you're if you find yourself looking for a franchise and you really need that structure, stepping into business for the first time, if you need a strong leadership you know entity there to help guide you, this is a good sign. If they are mentioning any of those three elements, if they're mentioning leadership in that and they're demonstrating it, it's a good sign. So guys, you have you guys have my personal backing on, on on all that. It's definite that you guys have those those core values there, and and I back that, especially as an ex-soldier looking looking at the leadership element from a very uh, uh, very different angle. Uh, so I appreciate that, and I like seeing it. So that's that's definitely kudos from me to you guys. Um, so just to wrap things up, and I, and I kind of do want to wrap it up because we're coming up on our 30 minutes, but uh, if you could break it down for us real quick, break it down Barney style. What is the, what are the basic elements? What are the basic requirements to getting into your franchise? What do I need to have? And what is the investment? And what does that look like? Sure. You want to take that? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to also you know reiterate the fact that you've got to be bringing the pieces that we just talked about, so the leadership and the you know, the passion for building a business and all those 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 inward things. As far as the the tangibles, we look for this investment. You can get in for under a hundred grand. That's sort of the the benchmark, with at least half of that being available in cash. So when we can talk, I don't know if today's the best form for it, but we'll break down all the different. Uh, pieces that would make up that investment when we have a conversation. 10 second yeah. version yeah. maybe would be. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at franchise fees, fees marketing, uh, getting your service vehicle on the ground, um, equipment, office setup, and then working capital. There so you there's go. your 100 grand. Yeah. Um, as far as net worth goes, I would say you, you want to be in a place where you're around 100 to 150 net worth. The key piece is you have to be, you have to have liquid assets available to be able to get the business launched. I mean, that's like anything, you just, you gotta pay to play. If you don't have the money to make it happen, then we sort of get st uh, stopped before we even get started. Um, so I think that would be really the, the key pieces. Is there anything deeper that you, any, any, do you want me to go deeper on that? No, or no gonna... that, was, that was perfect, guys, because you know, just those three key elements right there can help mm -hmm. people out immensely. Some people don't even know what that is. So guys, just to recap, they're looking at you needing a net worth of hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollars. You know, sometimes that's a little flexible depending on the industry. This being one of them, what that means is assets minus liabilities. There you go. 
what you're looking at in liquid capital, you're looking at at least having $50,000 to put into this. You have to have that to get the overhead and everything going. You need it. And two, you're looking at about $100,000 total investment, you know, average investment, I guess, to get to that, get to the point where you're, you're, you're comfortable and you're moving. All right. And, and, and so, one, more, one more piece that I'll add on that is we're looking for a full-time commitment from mm -hmm. franchise partners. So oh, this absolutely. is not something that you do on the weekends or the evenings. It's not something that you do in between day trading. This is, this is your new life. And so what we ask of, of any startup franchise partner is that for the first few years in business, we've got your 100% commitment because it, it will not hit the goals that you want it to hit if you're only half assing it. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's it. I mean, yep. that's any business too, especially when the serve with the service based industries, you gotta be 100%. in it. You gotta yep. be in it to win it. And, and that's a perfect that's a perfect uh, bit to it. Now, do you guys have any incentive programs going on whatsoever? Um, women in business, veterans, anything like that? Yeah, so uh, just given given your background uh, as, as a vet, we do offer uh, a veterans um, uh, benefit for uh, any any veteran a candidate would get 15% off of franchise fees. So right now our franchise fee is 46,000. So you do the math on that, it's a significant savings. So, and that's just a, you know, a thank you uh, for your service. And uh, we think it's money well spent. And that's, that's great guys. And I appreciate it personally. Any franchise that I look at, I really do look at that. And it's not necessarily about how much, and I'll say this, I say this every time and I'll say it again. It is, does not matter that the, what the franchise has is an incentive for you to come on. You should not use that as a standard basis of measurement for other franchises or to compare franchises. You use that as a test to see green flags to move forward with a franchise. If they're willing to do that and say thank you, that's that's it, it, whether you're a veteran or not. That that should ring that should ring a bell in your head, saying, okay, well these guys are these guys are highly motivated. They're capable of of helping others, and that's a, an established value. All right. So looking at that, even for veterans, do not use that as a basis of measure. See it as a sign of goodwill, and that's a green flag. Use it as just that. And I thank you guys for that. I appreciate that personally. All right. Um, just to kind of th end things up and, and to sum up everything that we've done, uh, we're looking at a painting industry. that We're looking at the painting industry, which is a $40 billion industry. And the new metrics are supposed to come out on that a little later. But uh, it's growing. It's growing for them. Their biggest ideas, their their biggest platform, their biggest you, their biggest, I guess, uh, differentiator is the fact that they're an interior painting company. A lot of places are exterior, or say they're both, but these guys focus on interior, so they have great levels of of uh, not so much being seasonal, but being able to gear their business throughout the year, and it's flexible, flexible for lifestyle. So there's great perks there. And looking at it from a, from a great standpoint of infrastructure and support that you're going to get from these guys, you know, speaking from experience in the military, from the military side of the house, is you guys, you got a couple of great, great guys right here that are going to help you by leading you through this process and helping you engage. That and helping you be successful. They touched on it. Leadership. All right. Purpose, direction, motivation. Can they give you that? I think we've answered that. So guys, I want to appreciate, I appreciate you for your time that you spent coming on and hopping and talking with us about this and, uh, you know, teaching a few, a few good lessons with this. I appreciate it. Um, uh, if, if you guys have any questions for me whatsoever. No, just maybe just, uh, the final thought of, of encouragement. If there are any people listening that have some interest is, uh, one of the things that uh, a potential prospect would probably look at is, um, uh, you know, again, goes back to what's the opportunity going forward. And one of the exciting things that we have as we're building this is we've got the unique combination of we've been, we've done this before. We've been in the business. We've got an infrastructure here. If I turn the camera this way, you'd see an office with about a hundred people walking around <laughs> working with our four brands. Yeah. Um, and with wow, as we're growing this thing, we're in the early days. So mm -hmm. when Cameron and I come in the office and we are talking to franchise partners and candidates, uh, what we find excites a lot of people is that we're going to, the brand will be here in 20 years. But we have, as they say in the industry, we've got NFL market opportunities. So if you're interested in getting in, into something at the ground floor level with, with a brand that has, has uh, committed to doing this for the long term, uh, that's something to consider. And uh, we believe it's, it's, an, it's a pretty cool feature that we won't always have. No. And today we do. So I just thought I'd just All share right. that. No, that's awesome. That, that, that brings me to a perfect conclusion and a perfect ending point. Guys, at, at the very end of the day, you're looking at franchises going through a business cycle. They're, they're in a growth cycle. Franchises start out and they're cheaper. End of the story. 
as they grow and as they become more successful and as more people latch onto that brand name and it becomes household, it gets more expensive. Right now, it's a great franchise in a great stage because of the fact that they have about 30, 30 some franchisees and it has something for you to measure yourself against. They have a proven system with many people in it already doing great things. So you have a perfect stage right here to see success, weigh yourself against it, and see what you can see. Because this is going to be the good time to latch on to a company that's growing. Thanks for watching Franchise Talk. Please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to like and share us on social media. We are committed to assisting you so that you find franchises without the frustrations of internet searching and site selling your information before you even get a chance to talk to franchises. If you want to simplify your life and have someone to facilitate your information collection, I'm here to be your personal resource and one-on-one -on -one coach. If you would like to be a guest on the show, to ask Franchise Bigwigs questions or contact me for franchise support, check out for my contact information below down in the description. Thanks for watching.